the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory forever. You know, I got stuck doing something I used to do as a child last night for almost four hours. The Ten Commandments was on, and my children had never seen it. They've studied it from the Bible, but they'd never seen it with Charlton Heston and Yul Brynner, and we watched it. Not the whole thing. We got started about an hour after it had already been in, but we still had over three hours of movie. And it was difficult for my children to understand why when Moses had gotten them through the Red Sea and the plagues had come upon the land of Egypt and all these things had been witnessed by the Hebrew people. Why, when Moses goes up to receive the commandments from the mountain, why in the world would the people turn to debauchery? Why in the world would they build a golden calf to worship after God had just shown all his glory by providing for his people? And I told them this is basically what happens anytime we are disobedient, anytime we don't do what God asks us to do, anytime what we're, we do what we're not spiritually instructed to do. It's like building that golden calf. You know, what's funny about the wilderness is it was supposed to be a honeymoon for God and his people. When we are distracted with the cares of the world, when we're distracted with all the busyness that's going on, sometimes we don't see our God. Sometimes we don't see our loved one the way we're supposed to. So God took his people to the wilderness. And it was supposed to be a honeymoon of God, the beloved husband, and his bride, Israel, the people of God. They had no other distractions. But what did they do? They made distractions for themselves. You know, my brothers and sisters in Christ, the time we've been given now to be coddled up inside of our homes, we can either use this time as a beautiful honeymoon with God and our families, or we can use it as a time to devise ways to go against his plan for us. Many people think that the struggles that are in our life are bad. We don't ask for struggles from God. We don't besiege sickness from God. But whatever we receive, whatever hand we're dealt, we have to receive it with thankfulness and give it back to God. This time we have of seclusion may seem like a time of war. We're scared, but we should see it as a time to prepare. Not to prepare for what we're going to do when everything's done, to prepare, but to prepare for that eternal kingdom. St. Nikolai, who is a 20th century saint, has a wonderful, wonderful quote that I'd like to share with you all today. He says, Just as people... Do not enter a war in order to enjoy war, but in order to be saved from war. So we do not enter this world in order to enjoy this world, but in order to be saved from it. People go to war for the sake of something greater than the war. So we also enter this temporal life for the sake of something greater, for eternal life. And as soldiers think with joy about returning home, so also Christians constantly remember the end of their lives and their return to their heavenly 
fatherland. This is what we constantly have to have on our minds. That eternal kingdom. You see, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, today, in the gospel, had an earthly kingdom in mind. They thought that Christ was coming into Jerusalem to establish an earthly kingdom. And that's why they asked, let us sit, one at your right side and one at your left. But they didn't really know what they were asking. Because to enter the kingdom of God, we must follow in the path of Christ. And that path leads to the cross. Christ knew his Father's kingdom. He had already lived there. He had already been there. But James and John thought it was something earthly that he was going to establish. And that's why we, my brothers and sisters, through patience, through obedience, we press on, not always doing what we want to do, but taking up that cross, which is a splinter, our crosses are splinters compared to the cross that Christ held. And we try to carry it and to follow his footsteps. But it's not always the way we want. Many of us are frustrated, we who are Americans, because we've been having this mentality for most of our lives that we can get anything we want Instantly. We like instant gratification. Sometimes next week's service isn't enough. We want next day delivery. We want same day delivery. And sometimes God doesn't work that way. Sometimes God says, you have to be patient. Very patient. Very, very patient. Today we commemorate a saint who was patient and who did take up her cross. Saint Mary of Egypt. What an appropriate time for Saint Mary of Egypt to be placed in the church. She wanted to be in union with Christ after having lived a life of debauchery far away from him doing vile things. And she all, saw all these people going into the church to venerate the precious cross. And she wanted that instant gratification without repentance. But she was barred from entering the church by an invisible force. And only after repenting, weeping before the icon of the Theotokos, was she allowed to enter the church. But that was just the beginning of her repentance. Her repentance lasted 47 years in the wilderness. It wasn't a peaceful time. It was a time that she was at war with all the demons who had tormented her. All the demons saying, you'll never be worthy of God's grace. You'll never be worthy of God's mercy. But through tears, through fasting, through patience, she waited those 47 years until a certain monk named Zosimus came to find out a better way to live and stumbled upon the stranger, Mary, walking through the desert. We're sad that this church is not filled with our family, we're sad that we can't open our mouths and see all the little children come and receive the body and blood of Christ. We're sad that next week only five people can be in church. But please, my brothers and sisters in Christ, do not think the only way to be in communion with God is to be at the church. We're blessed. But right now, that blessing has been put on hold. Just as it was for St. Mary, not for a month, not for two months, but for 47 years. She was in communion with God, 
being taught the scriptures by angels, being guided by the Most Holy Theotokos, even though no priest, no physical church building, no spoon was given to her mouth to receive the Holy Eucharist. Yet she continued to do the will of God through repentance. May this be our inspiration for those who are secluded in their homes, for those who are not able to come to church, for those who are commanded not to come to church. May she be an inspiration. James and John are now glorified in their sainthood in the heavenly kingdom. But they did drink the cup that Christ drank. They were brutally martyred, just as Christ was brutally slain on the cross. My brothers and sisters in Christ, the church and God do not work with instant gratification. The earth wants to give you false joy, but any joy the earth offers that doesn't push you towards the kingdom of heaven where there is eternal joy is not true joy. God offers eternal joy, but many times it comes through prayer, through repentance, and sometimes even through martyrdom, witnessing your faith just like the saints have done. We have a time we don't know how long it's going to be, but it probably won't be 47 years. So let us take this time that we've been given to change what needs to be changed, to make peace with those who peace needs to be made with, and ultimately to strengthen our relationship with our families, those we live in the same roof, under the same roof. Your cell phones still work. Reach out. Call that family member, that friend you haven't spoken to in a long time. This is communion. Christ said, if you wish to be in communion with me, you must be in communion with those around you. How can we say, I'm in communion with God when I don't speak to my brother? How can I say I'm in communion with God when I don't love those who are right in front of me? We have a time. We've been given a time, gifted a time to reflect, to isolate ourselves from the world. Let us not be like the Israelites who quickly made false gods, but let us be like Moses who was patient, who was fervent, and who was zealous for God and wait for his plan. He's given it to us through the scripture. Open our scriptures. Read. That is what we should be focusing on, his eternal commandments. Because God will offer us to drink of that cup, but it's the cup of obedience, being obedient to him in thought, word, and deed. May our good God, who is merciful and desires us to focus on the joy of his kingdom, to him be glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.